Hello, and welcome to this walkthrough for the Stages of Concern questionnaire online. My name is Brian Litke, and I work in CEDL's Communications Office. The Stages of Concern questionnaire is one part of the Concerns-Based Adoption Model, or CBAM. CBAM contains three different diagnostic dimensions that predicts teacher concerns and behaviors as they implement a school change process. So those three different dimensions are the stages of concern, which are different stages of feelings and perceptions that educators go through as they're implementing a new program. The levels of use, which are eight behavioral profiles that describe different actions or behaviors that educators engage in as they become more familiar with an innovation or change process. And the last is the innovation configurations, which are different ways the innovation may be implemented, shown along a continuum from ideal implementation to the least desirable practice. Today we're going to focus on the stages of concern questionnaire and the manual that's part of the CBAM tools that is related to the stages of concern is measuring implementations in school, the stages of concern questionnaire. So in addition to the questionnaire itself, this resource, measuring implementations in schools, describes how to uh, implement and read the stages of concern questionnaire. So in addition to the questionnaire, which could be implemented in a print format, CETL has created an online version of the Stages of Concern questionnaire that allow you to gather data quickly from educators so that you can tell what their concerns are and you can act on those to try to mitigate the risk of those concerns becoming a barrier to impl implementing the uh, change process that's going on. The Stages of Concern questionnaire uh, can be purchased online and it cost 50 cents per survey completion. So if you were going to survey 200 teachers, it would cost $100 to purchase access to the survey. And after you make that purchase from CEDL's online catalog, you'll receive an email with logon information. The logon uh, email that you receive looks like this. and. Uh, Typically, uh, in addition to the amount of survey completions that are purchased, we add 10 additional survey completions so that the survey coordinator can test the account. This email includes the location where you'll log on at, as well as information about the user ID that you'll use to log on, your email address, and your password. And the password can be reset by you after you log on to the Stages of Concern questionnaire. So let's just say that I've purchased access to the Stages of Concern questionnaire and I'm now ready to sign on to the system to get things going. After I log in, you'll see a little welcome screen that tells you how many survey completions you have access to, how many of those survey completions have been utilized so far, and how many different stages of concern questionnaire cohorts have been set up so far. And we can see that we've not yet set up a cohort. If you want detailed directions, you can click on this link to show directions, which basically uh, lists the main steps to proceeding with your stages of concern questionnaire. First, we'll set up a stage of concern questionnaire cohort uh, for the group that we want to take this survey. We'll define one or more subgroups within uh, that group if we would like to uh, see the data not only for the group as a whole but to be able to see the concerns of individual subgroups within that data set. We'll see how we can send in email invitations to users so that they can take the survey and then we'll view the reports. So the first step is to set up a new Stages of Concern questionnaire cohort. So I'll click the button to do that. And the name of this uh, cohort, uh, I'll just name My District uh, November 2009. And sometimes it's good when you're doing a cohort to include a date associated with this particular data collection because you might want to implement the Stages of Concern questionnaire a second time with this group uh, later on as they're implementing the change process to see how their concerns evolve over time. So what we can see is that as we set up this cohort, there's going to be a password that's generated uh, for this cohort. You can also request a custom uh, password code of your choice by typing it in this box. And below that, we see 
a sample email that you could copy and paste into your own email program that shows how you could include a link to the Stages of Concern questionnaire in an invitation that you would send to participants. So this is just some boilerplate language that you could customize to your own situation, um, the location where they'll take the survey and the password. And there's a little tip here. Another option is to place a link in the, sur in the uh, email invitation that goes directly to the survey and, and they don't even have to type in the password. This will just go ahead and log them directly in. So as we continue setting up this cohort, one of the things that we'll do is we'll customize the questionnaire with the name of our innovation. So I'm going to uh, put in the name of the innovation. In this case, I'm going to use differentiated instruction. And I could have uh, some introductory text that shows up at the beginning of the survey. And that could be uh, whatever introductory text makes sense in the context of the survey that you're giving. Do we want to include sample instructions on the front page? You could uh, either do that or you could say no. You could take them directly to the survey when they log in. There's some thank you text that would show up at the end of the survey. You could, after they take the survey, redirect them to a URL, but that's optional. Um, you can also set the system to receive emails to a particular email address as people complete the survey, or you could just log back into this control panel and it will show you a list of the people that have um, responded to the survey so far. One thing that you might want to do is set a date after which you don't want to accept any more uh, responses. Let's just say you're going to do a report after the data comes in and you don't want to have any latecomers adding additional data that might change um, the data that you're going to be using in your report. So you could stop allowing access uh, by setting a date there. An additional thing that you can do is set up custom prompts that would show up in the survey itself to gather additional data. Um, you could do this to allow people to enter in their email address or part of their employee ID to make sure uh, that everyone ha that's supposed to be taking the questionnaire has taken it. Um, and those will show up on the survey. So I'm going to go ahead and click to save this cohort. And what we see now is we're taken back to the top page, but now we've actually got a cohort. And we see that we can click to edit the cohort settings again. We can see the password, and if we click there, it'll go ahead and log me on to the survey. We can see that the co report for the cohort is not available yet, um, and there are zero people that have completed the survey so far, so there's no individual reports uh, that we could get to. We have also haven't set up any subgroups um, that would allow us to see a slice of the data along that subgroup report. So if we wanted to set up a subgroup report, we can click to do so. And there's some sample ones uh, that we see. So you could set up up to 10 different subgroup reports. And we can see that from the red text here, none of these are activated. But if we wanted to ask what building or campus people are at and then view the data based on particular particular campuses, um, we could click here to activate a subgroup and edit the subgroup options. So if we did that, we come to this page and we would activate our building uh, subgroup option and we would what we need to do next is enter in a list of school names. I'm just going to put in some sample school names here. And they're semicolon separated, meaning that I'll type in the name of a school and a semicolon. We see the same thing in the uh, grades taught. We could go ahead and activate that particular subgrade, uh, subreport too. And um, what this will do is make a pull down menu in the survey itself where users will be prompted to indicate what building or campus they belong to and what's the primary grade that they have taught. So we could set up additional um, prompts such as department where we could 
have them indicate what department they belong to, either a subject-based department, or it might be um, that you're asking administrators to take the Stages of Concern questionnaire. And this would give you the ability to sense what are the concerns of people in different departments or people that are in administration. So um, to complete setting up these subgroups, I would click to save that. And what we see on this page now is that we have certain subgroups that are activated. We didn't activate the subgroup for years of teaching experience. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to click at the top here to get back to our top level. And I'll show you what the survey itself looks like. We've already seen how we could um, get some sample text to send an email to our colleagues to take the survey, including a link um, that would take them to the survey. And so that has to be sent out through your own email channels. There's no tool within the Stages of Concern questionnaire that send the email for you because you might have a listserv or a uh, email group in your email program that allow you to efficiently send this invitation out. And so we didn't build that functionality into the Stages of Concern questionnaire. But for someone that actually received your invitation and um, we chose to hide the instructions on the top level, otherwise there would be a sample question here showing how people would reply. Um, but the user would get to the sample, or they would get to the Stages of Concern questionnaire they would see the uh, introductory text that we customized when we set up the cohort. We would see the uh, subgroup questions that we customized, where it asks them their campus, their grade, and their department. And then we see the stages of concern questionnaire itself. And notice that because I named my innovation differentiated instruction, it has merged the name of the innovation into the question itself. And so at this point, people would start responding to the different questions, and when they were finished, they would click to submit their survey responses. So um, next, we'll be looking at how to read the data that comes in. So I'm going to switch to a view where we've already got some data that has been collected.